Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the installment of Scott Selections here for Tuesday, August 18th. Before we get into today's play today, a quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up picking up a nice winner in the first day of the NBA playoffs as we ended up having the Clippers minus six, which was available on DraftKings at minus 110. One well, ended up climbing to roughly six and a half or seven, depending on where you got it uh, right before opening tip, as Beverly was announced as a late start for the game, as he was currently questionable beforehand. Uh, was a bit of a sweat. First half was very fascinating. Clippers opened up a 16-point lead in the first quarter then went down 14 points in the middle of the second quarter, and then they ended up winning the game by eight. So we didn't really have to worry about it. I thought they'd win by 10. They won by eight. Uh, Overall, Dallas' defense was still struggling. I wasn't really impressed with the Clippers' defense either, as Doncic got whatever he wanted. But Porzingis got ejected in the third quarter, and after that, it was, in my opinion, it was was, uh, lights out uh, for the Mavericks. They kept it close, but at the end of the day, they didn't have enough offensive firepower from the supporting cast besides Doncic to get the job done. If they picked up a winner there, we're going to be sticking with the NBA here for the Tuesday NBA card. I had I was very close to pulling the trigger on a couple of games here, uh, but I decided not to do it. But there's one game in, in particular that I'm looking at that I'm going to take, and it will be in a matchup between the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Houston Rockets. And the play that is going to be on the Thunder money line, which is available at minus 118 on FanDuel. A couple reasons why I like the Thunder in the spot. First of all, the main reason why is because of the fact that Russell Westbrook is not going to be playing, which means that it will be – uh, James Harden with a bunch of uh, role players, so to speak, uh, going up against Oklahoma City. And if you don't remember how that went the last time, uh, the Thunder tried that out. It didn't work against the Lakers when they benched some people late in games, etc. But they also uh, played the Pacers, who ended up benching Brogdon and a couple other people. Uh, Harden ended up having 40-something points, 17 rebounds, and 9 assists, and ended up losing outright by 4. Uh, the Thunder have been a very solid defensive team, and I think that with Harden being basically by himself, out there with the second best offensive player being, I don't know, Austin Rivers, I guess. I just don't think that Houston should do well enough offensively against Oklahoma City's elite defense. I think the Thunder have a very solid chance to win this game. The Thunder were 3-0 in uh, – sorry, they were 2-1 and one in the regular season meetings. I don't really know how important that is because Capella was still on the roster for all three of those uh, games against the Rockets. But the Thunder have fared pretty well against Houston so far this season. I am a fan of uh, the backcourt with Gildas Alexander and Chris Paul. I think they should be able to generate enough opportunities in the pick and roll against Houston's very, very small lineup to create some good opportunities for Adams and company. Uh, For rebounding rate, Oklahoma City ranks 19th and Houston ranks 28th. So Oklahoma City should clean up on the board, especially with Gildas Alexander being a very solid rebounding uh, guard. And one other huge factor for Oklahoma City that people aren't talking about, people are focused so much on the Westbrook injury and how he's out. They have forgotten that Oklahoma City 6-9 of the year uh, in Dennis Schroeder will be back for this game as he ended up playing in the season finale against the Clippers. Played well uh, after he missed a couple of games because of the fact that he left the bubble to see the birth of his second kid. So he's now back. He played really well in one game, and he is definitely part of Oklahoma City's death lineup. They roll out one of the most efficient lineups in the entire league uh, in the fourth quarter. I know that Schroeder might not win the sixth man of the year, but he's their sixth man of the year. And I think he definitely is a serious consideration. But the issue you have with Houston is I don't really know who's worth anything on their bench. Uh, I know they have a bunch of three-point shooters in Harden. Harden's probably going to play 40 minutes in this game, assuming he doesn't get into foul trouble. And I think Oklahoma City, with Billy Donovan, should design a pretty solid game plan for combating that. Uh, Houston, yeah, D'Antoni's kind of – he kind of screwed the team, if I'm being honest, by throwing Westbrook into a meaningless game against San Antonio for him to re-aggravate his uh, – his leg injury and Oklahoma city still went 44 and 28 in the regular season, same record as Houston. And now that Houston's missing its second best player, I think that Oklahoma city definitely warrants this line move as they went from roughly a pick or even an underdog. Once Westbrook is officially announced out, they've gone to roughly a two and a half point favorite in some spots, but FanDuel has minus one and a half and minus minus one ten, and the money line at minus one eighteen. So with that differential, you should just take the, uh, eight cents of juice there for an extra one and a half points. So for that reason, the play that I once again is going to be on the Oklahoma City money line to get the job done in game one at minus 118 on FanDuel. That's been the installment of Scott Selections here for Tuesday, August 18th. Good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.